welcome to Moist Studio. Subscribe and press the bell icon for more such videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to Moist Studio. We are back with another video. So today we will learn how to implement Flutter Downloader. So using this plugin, you will be able to basically download any file and you will be able to monitor the progress of how much it has been downloaded. Using this plugin, you will be able to basically check everything in the notification panel itself. You will be able to close it. The downloading thing, how much it has been downloaded, you will be able to track using the notification and you will also be able to open the files once it has been downloaded. So to start, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to go and import some plugins. So the first plugin that we'll do import is the Flutter downloader itself. So let's just go here, copy this part and let's paste it in a YAML file. Now the uh, Flutter Downloader plugin has been imported. Now the second plugin that we need is the Pathfinder because we'll be using, we need the storage directory to save the file or open the file. So for that we need the Pathfinder, Path Provider Flutter. Now even this plugin is done. Now we need one more library which is to check if the permission for a storage is granted or not. So for the storage there can be three cases if the permission has been granted or not granted or if it's in the between like the user has not given or like selected his opinion yet. So we need the permission handler plugin to check if the permission has been granted or not. If it's not been granted, we need to ask the user for the permission. So let's just import this permission here. So we have all the libraries that we need. Now we need to do some changes to the native level code. So one of the first thing that we need to do is because we'll be using the external storage, we need to ask permission for both reading the external storage as well as to write onto the external storage. So that will do in the manifest file. So here you just need to write user's permission, Android name, the permission name is android.permission.read external storage. So that's the first one. And the other one is write. So we just replace this read with write. So these two permissions we need and we also need to copy some code from the Flutter downloader to a manifest file that will just get it from here only. If you scroll down you'll come here Android integration. So you just need to copy this part and you need to paste it. You can paste it just after the activity that is good. Now there's one more code which is optional. So this code it's optional. So you can here you can specify how many con concurrent downloading tasks can be enabled. Like if the right now as you can see the limit is set to five. You can change the limit here. So for now we'll just have the same limit which is five, which is okay for us. So this part is also done. Now we can start with the code. So we can go to our main class and here now we can start with the code. So let's start by first initializing the Flutter downloader plugin uh, in the main class and because we are doing it in the main class in where the app has not run yet. So the Flutter framework has not yet binded with the engine. So we need to write one more line of code which is widgets flutter binding dot ensure initialize so that we ensure that initialization is proper and we can do stuff related to the Flutter before the app actually runs. So here we can basically uh, first, let's make this an async method and let's initialize the Flutter downloader plugin dot initialize and this is good to go. Now let's go here. So I'll be using this default class only and instead of this increment counter, let's rename it to something else. We'll just call it download file. So now we can download the file here. Let's just go to the code. Now here the first thing that we need to check is if the permission for storage has been granted or not. So only if the permission for storage has been granted, we'll be able to download the file, which is writing into the storage and reading from the file. 
so let's just get the status if it has been granted or not here we'll just write it await permission dot storage dot request so it will give us the permission let's just make this also an async function now here we'll just check if status is granted we'll write the code else for now we'll just write no permission later we can change it with the function which will basically request for the permission but here you need to basically check that there are different cases is denied is granted is permanently denied so in some cases you will not be able to request for permission again but that's for some later topic we'll do it later so for now we'll just assume that the permission is granted and we can basically download the file so that is there now here now we need a storage so we need a base storage which will save the file in the external storage and we need a file name so let's get the base storage first so we'll just call it storage or let's call it base storage and here we can use this thing get external storage directory so that is good to go now we have now we can download the file so that we can do using await flutter downloader nq and now as you can see we'll just let's open the function once and let us see what all options are there so here the url let's just keep it for empty for now we'll just find some open source file and we'll use that now the second one is save directory which is nothing but the base path so we'll just write base storage dot path that is there now the file name now let's give the file name as file name that is good now show notification is set to true and open file from notification is set to true which is okay we don't need to change that we don't need headers right now because we'll be downloading from an open source file or open source something so that is good to go now this is let's just find an open source file let's just search for open okay video file download test let's just search from something some sample video files download let's search if there's a git repository for this one for public test videos let's just go to this one and let's just download a small file this is i think this file is good how big is the file let's see yeah it's a 13 second file which is more than enough for us so now we'll be able to basically download the file on click of the floating action button now we need to monitor or the progress of how much has been downloaded and all so that will do so let us initialize the let us start by initializing the flutter downloader and call back so that we'll be able to basically track the percentage how much has been downloaded so let's just do that in the init state so here we'll just write flutter downloader dot register callback and the we need to create another function which will give us the values id status and progress but here there, there's one catch that this function needs to be a top level function or a static function by top level i mean the function needs to be created outside the class or a static function so we won't be able to basically directly access the values which are inside so for that we'll use some kind of a strategy that i'll tell so let's just call it download callback and declare it here and let's see what all variables were there okay let's just write flutter downloader register callback and as you can see these all things are needed so we'll just write it here and that's it and here we'll just write semicolon and we'll write download callback so this is done 
now here we need to use something called as ports because right now these are two different isolates so this is a static method so if you want to interact between two different isolates we need some kind of a communication which we can do using ports so you can think of it this way like right uh, there's a main thread and you're using one more thread so you cannot so both are asynchronous like both are executing independent of each other but you want to communicate between each other so for that you need some kind of a communication so we need a sender port and a receiver port for that so let's create a receiver port here now in the init state we can uh, basically assign a key to this receiver port so that we can use the same key to interact between the sender port and the receiver port so basically we are assigning a id so for here we'll just do isolate wait name server dot register port with name and let's just import this thing and here we'll do c port dot send port and here we can assign that an id we'll just call it downloading video so this is the id that we'll be using and we'll also create the listener here only so let's just keep it empty for now now in the download callback uh, we'll have to declare okay there is some error some kind of an error here yeah there is no semicolon for a function so now in the download uh, callback we need to create the send port so we will just do send port with the same id that we have used for the receiver port so we will just do send port and let's call it send port only and here we will just do isolate name server dot lookup by port number name and let's just copy this one and paste it here now here you can basically send data so it's a dynam it's of dynamic format so you can basically send anything so right now we'll only send progress which is of integer format and here in the message part we can just right let's create an int progress variable and give it a value zero and here we can just do progress is equal to message and let's just put it in set state so that we'll be able to basically show the message value here so let's just show it here and download percentage so yeah that's it that's the record so i'll just connect my mobile with this thing with the laptop and let's just run it and see how it works as you can see the app is up and running so now if you click on the floating action button it will call the download file method which will basically start the downloading and we'll be also able to see the downloading of the notification panel and on download complete we'll be able to basically click on this thing the file and we'll be able to open it so let's just try it how it works so let's just see right now there's nothing in the notification panel now let's click on the download button and as you can see the file has started and the download is complete now if we click on the download file the video plays so in this works now let's just go back to the page again and as you can see if the percentage is 100% so even that work so if you did like this video please do give the video a like and do subscribe to our channel because it gives us the motivation to bring out more and more interesting content for you thank you and have a nice day